We have an example here for a two-story building and two bays. Uh, we'll solve this problem to calculate the reactions at this support, at this support, and this support. So the question is to calculate the reaction at these supports. So I'll follow the three assumptions that we have previously to be able to calculate these forces. So step number one is is to break down this structure here and here to calculate the the f the, rea the forces at this and this this and this and this and this, and this. we'll name these joints so this will be y 11 this is y12 and this is y13 this will be y21 y22 y23 this will be x11 x12 x21 x22 <coughs> excuse me so we'll break it like I said so the first We'll break at this level, and to do <coughs> the calculation for this part, it is as as it is shown here. We have this frame, so we st we go to the assumption number one, which we says thirty is equal. This is H, this is 2H, and this is H. Go to H plus 2H plus H is equal to 4H, means H is equal to 30 divided by 4, and it is equal to 7.5. That is kilonewton, meaning that this value is equal to 7.5, this is equal to 15, and this is equal to 7.5. That is the first part. Now the second part for this, we need to pay attention here to the P in this time is accumulative it is not only for that joint so we make sure that again this we have the P which is 30 kilonewton plus 20 kilonewton these two is equal to this part is H this is 2H and this is H. So again, H plus 2H plus H is equal to 4H. And if we continue, we have 50 kilonewton is equal to 4H. That makes H is equal to 50 kilonewton divided by 4 and is equal to 12.5 kilonewton. So if we want we can update also this part. This is 12.5 kilonewton. This is 25, two times. And this is 12.5 kilonewton. So this is the first step to calculate. Now the second step is, is we'll break this joint at this level and the joint this level and this level. And the idea is why we do break these at this a joint, if you will, joint A2, A1 and A is to calculate the following forces. I want to calculate this force and this force then I'll be able to move to these reactions at joint A. That is the idea. 
So we'll we'll do the calculation here. So we broke this down here, and as you as let's just go back and take another look. We calculated the if we update the force here, it has been calculated as a certain value. So this is equal to equal 7.5 and this equal 12.5. So we'll take advantage of these in the second stage. So this is equal to 7.5 kilonewton. So if you look at again this, well, we'll be working on this joint, which we'll call joint A. We have, this is unknown, and this is unknown, and this is unknown. So you have three unknowns, which will make the equations, three equilibrium equations operational. So we can use these three. And we always, when we take this joint, we will take moments about this point. Because this is a point where two unknowns intersect. So we always do sum of all moments about point y21 is equal to zero. Sorry. Our point x21 is equal to zero. And if you look at this, the rotational direction, this will always rotate in this direction, which is counterclockwise. And this will rotate in the clockwise, which is negative. And this has no effect, and these two have no, no rotational effect. So we have only two elements. So when you have joint A2, or the highest left upper left joint, it is always two elements. So these ones will have, and this force is called Y21 vertical. So we'll have positive y21 vertical multiplied by and we'll benefit from the the assumption number three which says the inflection point happens at mid height and the height at this is four the entire height on the floor is four and half of it is two meters so that's why you need to pay attention to this so we'll have and of course mid spans the span here is equal to nine meters, so half of it will be four meters. So I prefer that when you do the sketch, put the dimensions also to be able to relate your calculation. So I21 multiplied by this distance, which is 4.5 meters. And then we have this one multiplied by this distance, which is negative minus 7.5 kilonewton multiplied by 2 meters is equal to 0. So straightforward, this will make have only one unknown, so y21 vert vertical is equal to 7.5 multiplied by 2 divided by 4.5 is equal to 3.34 that is kilonewton. So if you might as well update this by saying this is equal to 3.34. Okay. So now when we move to the next level, we'll do the carry-on. So the carry-on is for this force will be opposite in direction, equal equivalent in value. So this is y21 vertical which we calculated as 3.34 and you remember the k on for this one will be seven point five so what the k on is your reverse direction of the force that's what k on and if you would like to understand why would we do this if we gather these two 
the sum of these of these two must be equal to zero because at this point it is static it's not moving so they cancel out each other that is the reason why they are reversed the direction is reversed so I move to this point again if you look at here how many unknowns we have it will have uh, one unknown here in this direction one unknown upwards this is called the fuel x 11 h this is x 11 vertical and this is y 11 vertical and of course we have this force which we calculated in the first stage this one this is the force 12.5 so back is equal to 12.5 so again if you look at this joint this is unknown this is unknown this is unknown we have three unknowns only so again the rule is that we take the moments about this point because this will have two unknowns intersecting which will be cancelled out both of them and we don't need these forces at this stage so I will take again some of all moments about x 11 is equal to 0 same goes in here so this will always rotate in this direction which is counterclockwise this will rotate in this direction which is clockwise negative and this will rotate in this direction which is clockwise negative this will rotate in this direction which is clockwise negative so always you will see in cases like this, this is the only one that is positive just of them are negative always so I'll do that and just pay attention to the measurements here and measurement this is fixed 4.5 and this is 2 and this 2.5 these ones change so just pay attention to them because if you use the first one they might be in trouble so uh, I can start with the y11 this one positive y11 v multiply the distance is this which is equal to 4.5 meters the rest of them are negative so minus this one which is 12.5 by kilonewton multiplied by the distances from here to here which is 2.5 meters and then minus I have this one 7.5 Can you turn the distance for this is equal to 2? Multiply by 2 meters. Then I have this guy, which is again minus 3.34 kilonewton multiplied by this distance, which is 4.5, is equal to 0. So you want to simplify this, so we get y11 v is equal to <coughs> 61.62 divided by 4.5 and is equal to 13.62 kilonewton. So again, if you all update the value here, is equal to 13.62 kilonewton. So now I move to the to joint A and for joint A we'll do the carry on of load so we'll get this is equal to again these are the ones that are opposite in direction the equivalent in value so this will be equal to same 13.62 and you'll have this will be carried on 
to this side with the opposite in direction so it will be 12.5 kilonewton and of course I would like to know what is the value of a h and a v and m a and that is straightforward if we apply the equation so sum of all forces next direction equal to zero that will give us plus 12.5 minus a h is equal to zero which means a h is equal to 12.5 so this is the first reaction. Now if apply all forces in y direction equal to zero, we'll have uh, plus 13.62 is upwards minus AV is equal to zero. That means AV is equal to 13.62 kN. This is the second. Now for the moment, for this moment, the straightforward is this force multiplied by this distance, always. And negative positive, don't worry about the sign for now. The value matters to us. So moment at A is equal to the force, which is 12.5 kilonewton by by this distance which is 2.5 meters I will get the value for, for this reaction equal to 31.25 that is kilonewton meter so I have these three reactions calculated Now so far I calculated, if you look at the diagram, I calculated the reactions on support A. So I need to also calculate the reaction on support B and support C. And I can do it uh, one step at a time, it will take long, or I can be a bit smart and do this one, this one and this one from the entire building. So I managed to get the value for this. This is equal to 12.5. This is equal to 31.25 kilonewton meter, and this is 13.62. Now I don't know this value. I don't know this, and don't know this, don't know this, don't know this. So I need to get this ones also. So if I apply the first assumption, if you remember, in which I said this will be two times uh, h, and this is h, and this is h, I should be able to get the value of this because uh, the horizontal reaction at B is relevant to horizontal reaction at C or A. So I can do my equation. I will have the, f the, the lateral force sum of these two. So I'll have P is equal to H plus 2H for interior plus H. And so P is equal to 30 kilonewton plus 20 kilonewton equal to 4H. And that means H is equal to 50 divided by 4 is equal to 12.5 kilonewton, which I already know here, and that means BH is equal to 2 times 12.5 kilonewton is equal to 25 kilonewton, and CH is 12.5 kilonewton. So I can update my sketch here is equal to 25 kilonewton and this is equal to 12.5 so as left for me is this one and these two so let's think about so for for b 
if I isolate this B at this point this is one I will see that that the vertical reaction here is equal to zero according to assumption number two so there is no there is no force upwards here there is is equal to zero according to assumption number two so all I have is I need to know what is the value of this guy and this is from if you carry on if you have if you assume this is the joint here which is uh, this is y 12 so if they say this is y 12 and and this is a joint this value here is equal to if you go back to our first the value here is equal to if you look at here it's 25 kilonewton let's go back So this is 25 can Newton. So meaning this is 25. So this will be 25 can Newton. We'll just clean this. So this is 25 kilonewton, and all, all I need for the moment, for this guy, is the is this force multiplied by this distance. That's all I need. So to calculate this part, I will say moment at B is equal to 25 kilonewton multiplied by 2.5 meters. And MB is equal to is 62.5 kilonewton meter. So that is the the other reaction. So I got this one also. I have this one. I have this one. I have all of these ones. So I need to move to joint C. And this is Y13. So again, same story here. I need to, I know the horizontal and I don't know the vertical and I don't know the moment. So I'm going to do, do one at a time. So for, we'll follow the very same procedure here to get the moment. Let's do that. So uh, we know the force here. is 12.5 so when you move it here it becomes 12.5 kN for this one and the moment at A at C moment at C is equal to 12.5 kN multiplied by the distance which is 2.5 meters so M at C is equal to 31 same 31.62 that is kilonewton meter so i got these values let me just update these values i have this is equal to 12.5 and this is equal to 13.31.62 kilonewton meter the only thing is left for me is this guy and if you look at now the diagram here our thing here I can apply sum of all forces in y direction is equal to zero what do I get I have this value I have this value this is equal to zero and this value. So I have only these two values. So I can easily find out the value of 
CV. So I'll do that. I have minus 13.62 plus CV is equal to 0. CV is equal to 13.62 kilonewton. So now I got all the reactions calculated by using this method.